than it has in the past 1,000 years. Seed in business in Australia. The market plunged nearly 3% lower as the housing the investment market. I have senior investment consultant. Retail shopping will change more in the next 10 years than it has in the past 1,000 years. Everything will change. Stores will behave more like websites and websites more like stores. The fundamentals of what a store is, its purpose and function is already changing. Today, I speak about one major technology that will affect your shopping experience, beacons. Increasingly, retailers are using beacons to enhance in-store experiences by simultaneously combining your physical and online experiences. Bluetooth Low Energy, BLE, is the technology behind beacons and it provides device location on a very micro level, down to a single store aisle, for instance. This means that if you visit a store, retailers will be able to gather data not only on your movements, but also will be able to push content to your device you are carrying. From a retailer's perspective, the data collection of beacons is arguably more important than sales. They will be able to use this information to better segment customers and advertise accordingly. I think they could call this micro-marketing. What does it take for a refugee to succeed in business in Australia? It's not a common thought that an average person would think about, so I hope today my story will inspire you. At the age of 17, Khan Hazara sought refugee status in Australia after ongoing persecution of the Hazara people in Afghanistan. He left his entire family behind, including his wife and family. His dangerous journey from his mother country onto Malaysia saw him stopped in Indonesia and again in Christmas Island. After three gruelling months, he was finally granted his permanent residency in Australia. What a journey. In 2012, Khan opened his first supermarket called Dandy Markets, where he worked tirelessly to build a reputation as an innovative refugee entrepreneur. Today, he hires over 12 employees of refugee status. His key to success is a simple one. No matter what the odds are against you, to be confident, to persevere, and to believe in your dreams. We'll be back next week for the next inspiring business story. This is Melissa Darmawan. Good evening. This is Melissa Darmawan with the Finance News Headlines. The Australian share market plunged nearly 3% lower at the open of trade today, following Wall Street moving deep into the red after a rise in coronavirus cases in the United States. News of 44.2 million job losses in the world's largest economy also landed a dagger to the optimistic belief of some investors who had hoped global growth would recover sharply from the economic shock of the deadly virus. By midday, the ASX 200 had paired losses and was 2.5% lower at 5,819.3 points. Energy stocks were the worst affected due to falling oil prices, but the banking sector suffered heavy losses also down more than 3.5%. The Dow Jones Index had nearly 7% wiped off its value overnight. Among a number of concerning forecasts, it expects its unemployment to soar to 10% by the end of the year. This triggered an aggressive fall in Aussie stocks on Thursday, where investors abandoned their positions. The full story is coming up on the APM Finance Bulletin. This magnificent house behind me is anyone's dream if you wish to live close to the CBD and shopping centres, yet still close to the water. It's the perfect home for the investor or working family with its four en suites, an open plan contemporary kitchen 
an entertainment area outside that overlooks the sea with its daily sunsets. But with COVID-19, the property market has been affected. But how much? To give us an insight into the present housing investment market, I have senior investment consultant for Meridian with me, Warren Jacobs. Thank you for joining me, Warren. My pleasure. How's the property market been impacted by the coronavirus? Well, Melissa, there are a couple of things to remember. Uh, number one, we've got one of the most resilient property markets on the planet. And the reason for that is that we have a tremendously high percentage of owner occupiers. So you've got 70% of Australians are owner occupiers, 30% are renters. So it's a very strong market. And when you listen to the news on how things have been affected, and uh, there's no, absolutely no doubt that volumes have plummeted, but values haven't. I mean, if you look at CoreLogic's figures, for March and, and April, really it was only Hobart that went backwards and they're very heavily reliant on tourism, um, hospitality. Um, in June, Hobart and Melbourne went backwards 0.7, 0.4%. I'm not talking about massive amounts um, of um, something dropping off the cliff. That is not happening. People are holding on uh, to their properties and will always hold on to their properties. And like everything, the devil is always in the detail. You'll have pockets that are getting hammered and you'll get pockets that aren't. Very interesting that you say that. Now, there's one thing that you know, banks have started to become quite cautious around, and that's off-the-plan sales. Could you talk us through a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, banks are cautious on any sales at the moment. I mean, it is, they're in a world of pain. You know, they've got a lot of suspended mortgages. Uh, they look like they're gonna have to extend that again come September. So they are, their, their risk profile is through the roof. So in terms of, of, of plan, I think that they're looking at really, if you're wanting to be purchasing something, you're wanting to be putting in a bigger deposit. So in talking to investors who, whose off-plan strategy may work for them right now, they're a little bit petrified to get in, and saying, well, you know, we can see that there are some opportunities. In fact, there's some tremendous opportunities at the moment, but I would want this to, coronavirus to pass, and then I'll have a look at it. Mm. Um, and so, but even then, the banks are very, very cautious about lending money on anything. Thank you for joining me, Warren. Pleasure. That was Warren Jacobs, Senior Investment Consultant from Meridian Australia. We'll be back next week. Good night.